Yes, Mrs. Nelson, I realize that your new roof is not what the contractor agreed to do, but in order to prove that, I have to have somebody... No, I have to have a qualified roofer look at yours, go into court and test... Excuse me just a second. This can't uh, wait, mate. I'm on the phone with the client. Yeah, this is about Dan. Mrs. Nelson, can I call you back? Uh, yeah, it's... It, it's something you just came up here in the office. Yeah, I promise I will right away. Yeah. Thank you very much. What about Dan? Just come from the hospital. It looks as if there's been another attempt on his life. Talk about a tent. This girl is really gorgeous. She's got blonde hair, blue eyes, and man, when she smiles, oh, she really comes on, you know? Well, we're gonna talk about girls or we're gonna play cards here. Her name's Catherine. Begins with a C. I don't care what she spells her name with. Feel the cards. What? Oh, sure. <laughs> Five cards dead. Yeah, the first card goes down. Now, he knows how to play if he ever gets his dumb little mind back on the game. I'm Come dealing, on. I'm dealing. Her friends, friends probably call her Katie, though. That's one thing I gotta find out. Do we bet now? After we get the up card, if we ever get the up. Come on, Romeo, get your game back. Who, me? Come on, just deal the cards. I know she's got chemistry at 10. I figure if I just happen to be passing by the, the lecture hall door when she's... Okay, when she Mikey, you bet you got the uh, high card there. You got the queen. Okay. That's a good one. Amy, you're back! If you two have anything to add, now is the time to do it. Listen, Lee, I've got something that I heard that I think could help us. Well, what's that? Heather told me that Susan has been drinking a lot. I mean, oh, a lot. Come on, come on. What good is that going to do? Well, I mean, the chances are she's going to walk into court and she's going to look an absolute mess. She always looks a mess. Oh, I'm serious. I mean, if she's been drinking a lot, she's going to walk into the court. She's not going to make a favorable impression on the judge. Want to make a bet? Doesn't quite look like a mess to me. Boy, she looked terrific. Well, then why not? I mean, anyone that has broken up with you has to do wonders for them. Monica, I don't need any of your caustic remarks. I mean, you are here to help me, are you not? I am here for appearance's sake only, period. All right. This court is now in session. Honorable Judge Desmond Taylor presiding. Be seated. Here we go. your first witness, Counselor. Thank you, Your Honor. I call the plaintiff, Miss Susan Moore. Put your left hand on the book and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I, help you God? I do. State your name. Susan Moore. Be seated. Let's get to the heart of the matter, shall we, Susan? You are the uh, natural mother of an infant son by the name of Jason Moore. I am. Do you see the father of your child in this courtroom now? Yes, I do. He's sitting right over there. Let the record show that the witness has just identified the defendant as Alan Quartermain. Are you married? No. You are not married to the father of your child. Your Honor, the defendant stipulates he's not married to the plaintiff, never has been. But... Alan Quartermain did, in fact, promise to marry you. Many times. He said he'd get a divorce and marry me. That's the only reason I ever allowed myself to become pregnant by him. Objection, Your Honor. Now, the witness is stating a fact not in evidence. I'll allow her to proceed, Mr. Baldwin. Let's be perfectly clear on this, uh, shall we, Susan? Now, you allowed yourself to get pregnant by Alan Quartermain solely on his promise to secure divorce and to marry you. Yes, that's right. He said that he wanted us to have a family. In fact, he said it so many times that I believed him. And the fact is that now that you've had his child, he has not kept his promise. He has not secured a divorce, nor has he offered to marry you. But the fact is he has abandoned you. Is that not correct? Objection. Counsel is leading the witness. Let's just let her tell her story, Mr. Baldwin. Overruled. Alone, abandoned, Alan Quartermain's promises forgotten. Your witness. Thank you.
Miss Moore, let's, uh, let's talk some more about how you were abandoned. Did Alan Quartermain ever give you a discotheque? I used to work there. Your Honor, I asked the witness be instructed to answer my question. Just answer yes or no, Miss Moore. Uh, what was the question? Did Alan ever give you a disco? Yes. And did you then sell it? I did. And I assume you received a considerable sum of money for it. How much did you get for it? I'm not sure. Well, perhaps I can refresh your memory. The transfer of the deed shows that you received $120,000 for it. Now, is that what you collected? Objection! The deed is not in evidence. Your Honor, I can have that deed here in one hour, and I'd like it made a part of this record. Yes, I believe it was. I believe it was $120,000, but that money's all gone now. Oh, see? $120,000, all gone. Alan wanted me to look nice, and he also wanted me to make the house look nice. That took every penny I had. You mentioned your house. That also a gift of Alan Quartermain? He gave me the house. Did he also set up a substantial endowment fund for your son? Yes, he did, but it wasn't nearly enough for him to be raised like a Quartermain. Answer yes or no, please. Now, did he also offer you a, a personal settlement, a considerable sum yes. of money? Well, now, let's see. Alan has given you a discotheque and a house, an endowment fund for your son and money for yourself. Now, really, Ms. Moore, do you call that abandonment? What he did was near abandonment, yes. Because those things he gave me meant nothing to him. You see, he was trying to get out of his marriage promise for what the Quartermains consider pocket money. But all the time you were living with him. Yes, all the time. When you became pregnant and subsequently... Uh, bore his child during all that time. Surely you were well aware that he was married to Monica Quartermain. Yes, but he was going to get a divorce. Yes, or something. thank you. Now, Ms. Moore, isn't it just possible that your motivation for entering into this uh, intimate relationship with Alan Quartermain wasn't your emotions, certainly not your love, but your hope for money? Objection. Overruled. You know, her motive bears on the issue. Well, Ms. Moore, wasn't it money you were after? No. I didn't leave Alan. He left me. I ran away to New York to have his baby. I wanted to have it by myself. I wanted to raise him by myself. Oh, but you didn't do that. No, I didn't. Because Alan followed me to New York. And he begged me to come back with him. He promised me that he would claim the baby for his own. And that he'd marry me. And make me happy. So I came back. I came back, and what happened? He changed his mind. He lied to me again, and he'd broken his promise again. Where does that leave me? Where does that leave me? In agony. In agony. <laughs> Don't cry, Amy. Come on, stop it. I can't help it. Well, can't she even tell us why? Maybe we can help. Oh, come on, guys. Don't be stupid. Anybody can see what happened. She went to New York to visit a little boxer boy, and he dumped her like a hot potato. Is that what happened, huh? I knew it was coming. <laughs> Paris, you have been living in a gutter for such a long time, you don't even know what human feelings are. Oh, yeah? Well, I know it's time to grow up, and your time is right now. You are a jerk. Oh, well, I didn't get dumped. <laughs> Look, Blakey, knock it off, okay? Yeah, don't you fight with Amy. I ain't fighting. You guys want to know what happened? I'm just telling you. Just leave me alone, all of you, everybody. Wait, come back. You too, leave oh, me alone. Maybe we can help you. Oh, she's stupid, man. I didn't live in no gutter. Look, I'd better be getting home. I don't want you guys to fight. I'll see you. Well, we ain't fighting, buddy. I'm just telling you what happened. You are too fighting. I'm going to call Dr. Rick at the hospital and tell him what's going on. So anyway. While this guy is fighting with the nurses, I swear I saw someone trying to sneak into Dan's room in ICU. Who? Didn't get a good look. He saw me and took off. Okay, this patient that was out of control. Yeah, that's if he was a patient. What you're saying is that he might have been a deliberate decoy set to this so somebody could get into Dan's room. Well, I think when the dust settles, that's how it's gonna look. Damn it. Who's behind this, Robert? Who's oh. doing it? I wish I knew. I wish we knew anything. We try to come up with information on a dead man and we get zero. You mean Holly's father? Well, the FBI have given me three possible leads. All named Charles Sutton, all dead within the last year. Any of them are boy? Well, one was four years of age, one 26, and one was a First World War veteran. Okay, so Holly's father was a drifter and there was no record of his death. 
Come on, someone must have known about it, otherwise how could she inherit that land? Good question. Yeah, well, I'm full of them today, including the really, really big one. Is Miss Sutton who she really says she is? <sighs> It'll take us all day to work on that one, and I'm late as it is. Listen, mate, we've got to think about this, all right? There's an answer here. Okay, We're running straight past it. We'll meet at Kelly's later on, and we'll hash everything from the beginning to the end. It's a good idea. Uh, something just occurred to me. When Holly's father bought that land, who signed the check? Did you find that out? Paid for by cash. Oh, terrific. Another bloody dead end. So what do we got here? We know she's British. She says her father's American. But maybe he wasn't. It could be East Indian, but what difference does that make? This makes it a whole lot harder to check into her past. Harder or impossible? I agree. But we both know one thing. Pray enlighten me. You and I are going to find out a whole lot more about this Sutton bird. The plaintiff calls uh, Heather Weber. Put your left hand on the book and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Answer, I do. I do. State your full name. Heather Weber. Be seated. Susan Moore is your cousin, is that correct? As well as a very close friend? I love her as if she were my sister. Were you aware of her relationship with Alan Quartermain? Of course I was aware of it, I mean, being a close friend of hers. In your own words, would you tell me what you knew about her relationship? Just that Alan had promised to marry her and that she'd given up her career for him. In other words, Susan relied on Alan's promise to divorce Monica and to marry her. Answer the question, Heather. Uh, yes. Susan believed every word Alan told her. Did you believe that Alan Quartermain would keep his promise? Objection. It's irrelevant. I'll allow it. Proceed. No. I knew that Alan wasn't being faithful to Susan. I knew he wasn't even being truthful with her. You had this kind of knowledge? How? Alan had made advances towards me. Your Honor, I would like to present a photograph of Alan and Heather together at the Star Nightclub for evidence. Heather. Did you inform Susan of Alan's advances towards you? I couldn't do that. I knew how much it would hurt her and how much she loved her baby. It would devastate her to learn that Alan was being unfaithful. Thank you. You're a witness. Mrs. Weber, are you being paid for your testimony here today? Of course not. At least not in money. Could you explain it, please? If not in money, how are you being paid? Well, I do get the satisfaction of knowing that my cousin will hopefully get what she has the right to. Ms. Weber, your nobility is extraordinary. Your Honor. I warned you before, Mr. Baldwin. Keep your comments to yourself. Sorry. Now, Ms. Weber, you said... Uh, that Alan Quartermain made advances toward you. Isn't it a fact you encouraged those advances? I certainly did not. In fact, I was shocked by it. Yes, I'm sure you were. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. You may step down. for again, and no patients escaped, and no nurses chasing anybody. Their assumption was correct. It was just a diversionary action to distract the guard. Which mm. should not have happened. Excuse me, Mark. Yeah, sure. Officer, let me make something clear to you again. Captain Ramsey told you to guard the ICU area. That and nothing else. I understand. Obviously, you didn't. 
I'm sorry about that, Dr. Hart. Then make sure it doesn't happen again. You are not supposed to leave your post, no matter what the reason. If an emergency arises, we have someone here who can handle it. I know that now, sir. Then see to it that you remember it. What is Dan's present? I was just going to check on him. Why don't you come with? I'd like to. I think we should all go. We won't be long, Jesse. All right. No significant change. Let me ask you something. You think his heart is strong enough to survive more surgery? I think it's too early right now to make that decision, Mark. That's my impression, too. Continue with the medication, uh, constant monitoring, then the side. Mm -hmm. I agree, I agree. Unless he gets retrogressive, it's best to wait. The important thing is to keep the man safe. Well, something is very obvious. Somebody wants him dead. Now, we learned one thing from this last attempt, however. What's that? Luke Spencer didn't try to kill him before. The plaintiff rests, Your Honor. Very well. Is the defendant ready? We are, Your Honor. I have an exhibit to be marked for entry. What is it? It's a photograph, Your Honor, that clearly shows the counsel for the plaintiff taking a picture of Heather Weber and Alan Quartermain. I'd like to have it made part of the record as an example of Scott Baldwin's unethical behavior in this case. Objection. I'll handle this, Counselor. Mr. Baldwin, I don't need to remind you that Miss Moore's attorney is not on trial here, and his ethics, or lack of them, are pertinent only in the hearing of the Committee of the Bar Association. The picture will not be entered. Will you proceed, please, and stick to the merits of the issue before us? The defense calls Mr. Joe Kelly. What is Joe doing here? I didn't know he was going to testify. I didn't know either. I do. Mr. Kelly, do you know the previous witness, Heather Weber? I do. Would you say that you know her well? I know her intimately. Did you know that she had a sexual relationship with the... Uh, Attorney for the plaintiff, Scott Baldwin? Your Honor, I know that she slept with Mr. Baldwin. Your Honor, I protest vigorously. How do you know that? Because I saw them. That'll be enough. Now, Mr. Baldwin, I'm going to strike your whole line of questioning, for as you know very well, it is totally irrelevant. Now, I warn you for the last time, stick to the facts at issue here and leave Scott Baldwin out of it. Put your left hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? May I offer a suggestion? Smile. What for? Well, maybe the judge will see that you look competent. I'm not. And you have every right not to be. You look like you're losing hands down, Ellen. I'll make this very brief, Mrs. Quartermain. Do you have current knowledge of the financial worth of your son, Alan? Well, at the moment, our funds are greatly diminished due to some investments which have not paid off. In short, the family's resources are presently limited, is that correct? Very limited. Thank you, Miss Quartermain. No further questions. Uh, you mean that's all there is to it? Yes. I have a few questions, Mrs. Quartermain. Oh, dear. When you use the word family, you are referring to the worth of your family corporation known as ELQ. Is that right? Well, of course. Everyone knows that we own ELQ. Is it also true that your son, Alan, has a private fortune of his own, as well as a future interest in ELQ? Uh, Alan has his own money, yes. And is it also not true that he is the sole heir to your private fortune, as well as your husband's private fortune? Uh, you mean from our wills? Exactly. He is the principal beneficiary to both of your wills. Naturally. After all, Alan is our son. So if you add up his 
private fortune, as well as his potential future with ELQ, as well as his potential wealth as your heir, would you say that your son, Alan, is a very, very rich man? Objection, Your Honor. That question's very vague. I will amend it. Would you say that your son, Alan, is a millionaire? Oh, that sounds so vulgar, but, uh, well, yes, I, I suppose he is. The fact is that he is a multi-millionaire. No further questions. Thank you, Mrs. Quartermain. The witness is excused. Tell the truth, Alan. I know you did. And please don't worry about it. You did absolutely the right thing. I know it's been a terrible ordeal for you. Would you like to go home and rest now? Yes, I think I'd like that. Yes, you go on home, Lila. I'll stay here and watch Alan drown. Drown, dear? It's all right, Mother. We'll see you a little later. All right. Thank you. Now what? Well, now I think we're going to have to get rough. We have to prove somehow that Scotty has built a fraudulent case here. He hasn't done that so far. Monica, do you think you could at least pretend that you're on my side? How do you mean you're rough? Well, I'm going to call Alice as a hostile witness. Why? She's Susan's aunt. I know, but uh, Scotty has not put her on the stand, and that could mean that she is on our side. I doubt it. Well, I'm sorry, Alan. I have no other choice. Got to question her and see. <laughs> Um, Mike called you while you were in the ICU. He called from home. Something wrong? Well, he wasn't terribly clear about the whole thing, but he seems to want you to come home. He said uh, everything was upset. That was the word he used, upset. Thank goodness. If there's a problem, I hope Tommy's not a part of it. He went over to your house to study with Blackie. Oh, there could be a lot more problems in my house without Tommy having anything to do with it. I better oh. check on that. Thanks. Sure. I think I'll check on the guard one more time. Oh, see you, Steve. I'll be in my office, Jesse. All right. Thank you. Well, hello. You're not the cheeriest thing I've seen this morning. I am. Yes, you are. I don't you know are. why I'm exhausted. Why? This therapy work getting you down or what? No, no, I love it, but it does take its toll. To tell you the truth, I'm not exactly thrilled about the idea of going back to the diner and handling the dinner crowd. Oh, oh I see. Well, then don't. What? Close the diner. I'll come over and cook up a storm just for you and me. Close the diner? Yeah, why not? As a matter of fact, I, I must tell you, I'm an excellent cook. But to close the diner to the public, I, I've never done well, that Well, do it now. Live dangerously. Why not, Ross? Huh? You know something? You're right. Why not? Indeed. Oh, you. Mrs. Grant, your deposition makes very interesting reading. May I ask, were you pressured into signing it? Objection. I'll allow it. Were you pressured into signing your deposition, Mrs. Grant? Yes, I was. Why did you sign it? I didn't want to sign it. I like Alan Cornemain. I didn't want to see this happen to him. Yeah, but you did sign it. Why? Because I had to tell the truth. Does this deposition contain the truth? Oh, yes. Every word of it is true. No further questions. Counselor, do you want to cross-examine the witness? No, Your Honor. I think the witness has been eloquent. You're excused. Your next witness, Mr. Baldwin. Please, the court, I... I would like to have a, a moment to confer with my client. Make it fast. Thank you. I have no one else to call for now. I'm going to have to rest. How does it look? Well, frankly, it looks... it looks terrible. We haven't had a single break. Put me on the, on the stand, please. What? Just put me on the stand. Come on, come on. God's sake, have a little bit of compassion. What are you going to do, drive the last nail into the coffin? What could you possibly say, Mark? I, just, I will say what is on my mind. Just put me on the stand before I have to stand up here and start shouting right from this chair. Monica, please don't do this to me. I'm going to stand up, Lee, if you don't put me up there. Uh, Your Honor, uh, uh, the defense uh, calls Mrs. Allen Quartermain. General Hospital will continue in a moment.